I am ready. Then let's do this. Hello, Undertow viewers. Where can I start with the game, Brink? Well, let's just say it's like opening a present on Christmas and getting a pack of socks. I was so excited to finally play this when it came out. You see, I'm a longtime fan of Bethesda games, such as The Outer Scrolls and Fallout. And when I saw this was one of their games, I got a few chills, not gonna lie. The game was definitely marketed to be a success, and it looked great from what I could see with the trailer I watched prior to its release. Now when I started the game up, the first couple minutes had me going like, an arc? Yeah? Two sides? Tell me more! Then when all that in-your-face awesome stuff is done, you're just told to either save the arc or escape the arc. And I kind of liked how there was a little kettle drum beating back and forth as I hovered over my choices. Very dramatic. Now this choice that you're making is a very Bethesda-like feature, making me think of all the crazy decisions in Fallout 3 that you make. So I decide to bust out of this arc and see what happens. Well, you get a really pretty looking cutscene, and then you go to the initial character creation. Now you're told to pick an archetype, and this is what brings me to feel like it's a Team Fortress knockoff. You have these types that are like the look, the bruiser, the psycho, and many others that they list. You can also pick what voice you want them to have. I kind of went with Alec Newman. He sounded pretty neat. But there are tons of other choices if you just don't want to be Alec Newman. Really, the customization is a very unique asset to this game, and there are many different items you can unlock as you complete parts of the game. To say the least, I tried to make this guy look as ridiculous as possible. Now, after you select your character and finish him, you'll be briefed. And you're briefed by what sounds like a very lovely woman with a very beautiful accent. Soldiers can complete destruction objectives using explosive charges. Once your briefing is over, though, it's time to choose what to do. I'm ready, sir. Yes, sir. Now, when you get into campaign, the controls might throw you off at first, mainly if you're used to the majority of first-person shooters out there. Going in there, I mean, unfortunately, for this kind of game, this is the Xbox version, where I think the controls would be a lot nicer on PC. But then again, your right trigger is still the obvious shoot, and you can uppercut with your weapon by holding in the right analog stick. There's a few other controls that are similar to shooters, and it's not too tough, but it gets tougher as you go into your first mission. Whatever area you start in, whether it's campaign, free play, or challenges, you're still going to be holding that gun, and that's what really killed me. The movement of the character just felt a little odd and heavy. And then I started to move and shoot, which felt even worse where I had to change how fast the controller moved my gun up and down in the options. But once you got aim of a target, it wasn't that hard to shoot them. It was just the initial setup of getting used to the way it felt. Don't get me wrong though, the campaign isn't the worst. But I can see that this is a multiplayer type of game. I mean, unlike typical shooters, this one definitely wants you to apply teamwork to reach your objectives. Which reminds me, you have different classes you can be, like engineers, medics, and soldiers. Which again, gives me the whole Team Fortress feel. Now I haven't tried Brink Online myself yet, but to do so you simply just register online with the instructions that are given to you on your console. Now the big question, since I haven't tried the multiplayer yet, will I give this game a chance still? I feel it has potential there with the objective-based multiplayer they have going on, but seriously, Brink definitely strays away from the average shooter and it's still worth checking out.